Hey, what's up folks? This is making a redistricting app part four. And in this one, we're going to look at running checks. Whenever you do redistricting, you have rules that you need to pass and you need to run checks to see whether your plan passes those rules or your plan sucks. Now there's two things I want to check here and you will have more than two when you go to do redistricting, but once you see these two, how they work, it, you can see it'd be fairly simple to add more. We're going to run a population check and basically that'll make sure that the the min the the min and max distance away from the mean of the population of the districts is less than 10%. You're trying to make the populations fairly balanced. And the other thing we're going to check is whether the Pre, the districts are contiguous and that second one's going to be interesting because we're going to try to use turf for that and I think it's going to work uh, but we'll see so there's you you could store that all in components if you want just get the geography store and just kind of do that in each component my tendency would be to put that in the store itself because you're probably going to need it at more in more than one place. Like you might need the geography district values for the chart and the check uh, for, for the population. So I probably put that in the store and there's a special thing Svelte has just for this sort of thing. And it's called a derived store. And derived is what it sounds like. It's a store based on another store. So if you had a store whose value is six, you could make a derived store that's that other value divided by two. So that one would end up being three. So we're gonna take our geography. It's going to have all the things we need to apply our rules. It has all of our geography and all of our properties. We're gonna make some derived stores from it. And let's start with the most interesting one first. We're, let's do uh, contiguity. And we're going to uh, use this dissolve function in turf. And it looks pretty straightforward. You just give it some geojson and a property column to dissolve from. So let's install that. Pull up another little window here and go npm install dash dash save. I know there's shorthand for all these things. I, I can't be bothered. Uh, at turf, turf is nice in that every one of these things you can install as a separate thing. So you don't get this monstrous library. Dissolve. Go. All right, we got that. Now we should be able to go import dissolve from turf dissolve. Nice. And now let's make our derived store. Export let, what do you call it? Contiguity. That's what we're checking. Let contiguity equals derived for our derived store. And you're going to give it the name of the store it's deriving from. Then you're going to pass it a value. Sorry, our shorthand for passing a value here. And then we're going to want to return our dissolve results. Let's see if we can just, because I think this will probably, this looks like it's a one liner. I think we can just give it our geography and then give it uh, the column we want to do that from. I th think that's it. We'll, we'll do a console log that to see if we're crazy or not. Survey says get bent. All right, let's see what we got here. Failed to resolve import turf slash flatten nets because I, I didn't I didn't want that. Turf invariant, turf meta. Uh, uh. Ooh, I think we have arrived in a bit of dependency hell. Let's see if we can, uh, maybe just this first one will do it. npm install dash save 
You know, Turf, if uh, Dissolve needed that, it might have been nice if it had gotten it itself. Just saying. Okay, now save. Uh, turf is not defined. Do I have? Oh. Ah, no. Why do you care about Map Libre? Does not pro Sometimes I've noticed this. So you might run into this if you're using SvelteKit. If you put in brand new library components after it's running, it gets the hot module reloader confused. That looks like one of those, uh, stop it and start it back up with those components, you might be okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what that is. So we're console logging, that's an object with six features. Okay. Oh, so it's 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 giving us six geojsons. It's not exactly what we want. What we really, we really want is a count of the number of districts. Let's go features.count. Uh oh, features.length. Pardon. Six. Which should be right. Let's try adding one out in the middle of nowhere and see if it'll it'll make it seven. Seven, perfect. And if we connect that back, it should make it six again. It did. Oh, that's because we just, now this one's two separate ones because they're, they're split. I think that's working fine. Yeah, because now it's six again. So that was easy. One line of turf. Th this took a round trip to the server a decade ago and the idea that you can do this just that quick in your browser is thank you turf even though you made me install another thing i forgive you this is awesome now we need to do our geography no let's save that let's go ahead and make our indicator over here then we'll do our geography next so we're going to need another component we'll go to our lib folder make a new file and call it contiguous con Dot and we'll include it in our index.svelte import uh, contiguous contigu from dollar sign lib slash contiguity. Now let's just put that, I'll just put it right here. Okay, it won't show anything yet because there's nothing in there. Now, let's see. We're going to want to import the contiguity from our store. And what we can do, let's just give it a little header. H3 will go contiguity check. And what we can put here is just a little if then. We'll say dollar sign contiguity equals six. And that means we're good. We'll say yay. And if not, we will say nay. So it says yay. We put something in the middle of nowhere to make it seven. Nay, perfect. But this is boring looking. Uh, let's, let's make that a little better. I made in CodePen this little animated check mark that does check yes and check no. The CSS and the SVG of it are, are not super interesting for what we're doing, but let's just use that indicator.spelt and let's give it this SVG. 
And I will, I'm, I'm gonna put all this code in somewhere like on GitHub or something. So don't panic. Uh, style, no, not, not that kind of style. Give me the style, thank you. All right. There's a bunch of CSS. I was doing this in CodePen, so this isn't uh, Tailwindy, it's just CSS. And let's, we're gonna use this for both of our, our checks. Let's give it a prop. A prop is a way to pass data from a parent to a child component. Um, it is very handy if that's the only kind of relationship you have with a piece of data in your app is from a parent to a single child. You can just stick that in a prop. You don't have to do stores or any of that other kind of stuff. We'll go export. If you make a variable and begin it with export in your component, it turns it into a prop. Export let pass and we'll get a fault value of true. And it's just saying we haven't used this, used it yet. It's just a warning. So let's use it. We'll go down to our SVG. We will just bind that class. We'll say class pass equals that incoming. That's going to be true or false. And we'll make that true for our two little animated check marks that are going to happen. We'll uh, put that say here. Actually for this one, we'll want it if it doesn't pass. These are hidden by default. So this is going to be if it doesn't pass, make that visible. And then if this one does pass, we'll make that one visible. One of them is a check mark and the other one's an X. And also turn it uh, based on this one from red to green. So let's include that in our category check. We'll go import indicator from dollar sign lib slash indicator. And then we'll just put that in here. Indicator. We're going to give it a, a prop of pass. And we're going to just make that this true or false statement. So it's either going to get true or false. And that should give us a dynamic check mark Unless I just broke something. Let's go back over here. I haven't looked in a while. All right, let's see if it goes to a red mark if I do that. Perfect. Go back to good. Thanks. Let's pretty this up a little bit. Uh, let's see. We will uh, make space this right in the middle. And for our contiguity text, we'll class equals uh, large text and center it up. That looks good. Uh, you know what? Let's give a little padding on the bottom. <laughs> I'll just say margin bottom and give it a, a one. To, they look a little too comfy. That's a little better. All right. So there's our category check indicator. Let's do one for population. First, we're gonna to have to make our store for that. So we'll go, what I wanna return from here is an array of the total population of each district. So it'll be an array of six items. And to get the total for that, I'll just sum those items when I need to. So export, let population equals derived from geography, dollar sign geography. And in this one, I'm gonna give it some curly brackets because we're gonna to have to do a little work. Now there are different ways to, to do this sort of thing. I think back in the day, 10 years ago, I used Lodash, which has a lot of uh, nice array functions. Don't really use Lodash much at all anymore. Um, you could do an array, like a you know a loop and then a, an array filter and an array reduce. Uh, just uh, let's just keep it simple. 
const pops equals, and then we're just going to give it six zeros. And this is like a zero for each one of our current districts. Then we'll go geography.features.forEach dot for each feature. And so now we're making a loop through our features. And what we'll do is we will, we're gonna get the district from each feature to indicate the index of the population we wanna to add to, and then we'll just add the population to it. So we'll go feature, oh, no, we'll go pops feature.properties.district. Uh, we wanna take one away because our, our array index is zero through five and our districts are zero through six. Dot, no, we just wanna make that equal to plus equal, we want to add, and feature.properties population. So let's, we got, we got to return that. Return pops. And let's try that down there and see pop is not defined, oh, pops. Okay. Well, these look like populations to me. Let's try, uh, this is 167639. Let's try adding another one to that and see if it goes up. 17, yep. I think we're good there. So we got our population. Let's make an indicator for it. So we'll go to lib, make a new file, population.svelte. And I'm going to just, because it's going to look very much like our contiguity, I'm just going to paste that in and then try adding it to our index so we can see it. Import population from population. And then down here, We'll just put that right here. So doesn't look right, but you know, it's working. So now we're going to import instead of contiguity, we'll get our population and then change this to population check. And then this is gonna be a formula for what we're gonna pass in. Not really a formula, it's going to evaluate a formula. What we want is the maximum population of the districts uh, minus the minimum population of the resulting districts and then divide that by the mean of the total population and see if that's below 0 0.1 or 10 percent. That sound confusing? It sounded confusing when I made this the first time around 10 years ago, but uh, the formula seemed to make everyone happy, if I'm remembering it right. So you would just go like, uh, you would want the math.max of uh, the dollar sign population. And this is an array, so to use math.max with it, you have to, oh, uh, VS Code, why you mess with me? You want to spread it out like that? VS Code, what are you doing? Math.max population minus that only the min. And then, and you want that all to go, then you can divide that by, and here we can do an array reduce. We'll just go dollar sign population uh, dot reduce a comma, no, ah, you're messing with me, VS code. 
plus b, starting with a zero. And we want to evaluate that whole formula with, uh, is that less than or equal to 0 .0 0.1 .1 or 10%? What are the odds this is going to work the first time? Not good. Uh, I don't believe it. Do you believe it? I don't believe it. Let's let's try making one of these districts bigger and see if we can get the population check to fail. Let's uh, let's just make one bigger. It's not surprising me this passed the first go round. Oh, I think we did it. This this number one got to two hundred thirty six thousand is like new. No. This, this fake data is made with data that actually works with a random small fudging to it. So it's not surprising to me. It was pretty close, just right out of the box. So let's see if we can make it go back. Uh, actually, we wanted, we wanted the uh, purple to get bigger. There we go. And can we, can, can we break it? The contiguity check. Yep. All right, we're doing checks. We're doing checks on the population and the contiguity, which I'm, I'm very, very happy about the contiguity. And it didn't really take us a lot. There's a lot of hand wavy stuff going on. Uh, import contiguity. We don't need that. Why do that? VS Code, uh, I've got a lot of cool extension that helps, but sometimes it tries to outthink me and does bad things. It just had a random import for no good reason there. I, I believe that is, I believe we're good. And this didn't take a whole lot of code. The, I put that, both those uh, things we're gonna check in our store, and the same population we're gonna use next time to make a chart. So that's gonna have a, another use for it as well. Contiguity, so it was just, this little bit of code, we had to do our store for those checks. And then our population kind of looks like this. And our, could we just kind of look like that? And this indicator just has a lot of, you know, stuff in it, but it's, you could just write yes or no there and, and not have bothered with that. I just thought that might be fun. All right, there's our checks. We only have one thing left and that's to build a population chart. And we're going to use that same population store for the data for that. Uh, you're going to want a, some some charts for your re redistricting app. And uh, since we're only using population here, we only need population. Uh, if you're trying to hit a target goal for all of your districts, you need some kind of indicator for that. And what I'm thinking is, is it, we'll have a bar chart with each bar being the population of each district but a line going across it, which indicates the, the mean. So you kind of know what you're trying to get all of the bars level with when you're doing this. All right, I think we only have one more to go and we're done. When this is all done, I'll just put all this code on, on GitHub somewhere. So you'll, you know, don't, don't pause the screen every three seconds, try to type furiously, it's, I'll, I'll put it somewhere. All right, catch you later, bye-bye.